morning and welcome back to Odd Socks. So I thought I'd give you a little show around of the big difference between towards the end of February and the beginning of February. Now there hasn't been major changes, but it has been tidied up and I have managed to get some of the structures done. So I've managed to do quite a lot of weeding, even though there wasn't that much to actually do. There's my new fruit bushes, or some of the new fruit bushes. And that area has actually been dug over. It doesn't look too bad. Only thing I've got left to do down here is this little area. Now this had been covered with plastic sheeting and I had actually planted my squashes in holes through the plastic last year and they did really, really well. But it's going to be mulched and it's going to be a little bit bigger an area here for all my corn. So this area is where I grew corn last year. It's been enriched with some leaf matter and some grass clippings, things like that. And I'm going to extend it to over here as well. Now, this area, I've kind of got plans for some urchy curry squash to go up here and up and over this arch. And then I've got some crown prints and some other little bits and pieces. I'm trying not to overthink of what I'm going to put into certain beds. I want to have an idea where I'm going to be putting some of these bigger plants because they are going to need that space. But I also want to put in some other plants too things that are not going to get swamped. So this area really will be play it by ear a little bit. I've got some ideas and I've, and I've got some seeds kind of set aside for this area, but it all depends on how this area grows this year. Now on some of these beds, some of my compost could have done with a bit longer, to be honest, but I'm sure it will be absolutely fine. So this is quite wide beds. Now I've done this on purpose because I am growing squash and things and because I'm not digging this ground and I've only dug one strip, I can actually walk over this without too much damage. Now this is quite wet, but there's a big difference in compaction if you walk over your tilled soil. So I'm happy to have slightly wider beds here. Now, over here is all my raspberry canes and I do need to have a bit of a weed in this area. It really does take over some of these perennial weeds but they're all looking really healthy and in fact the autumn flowering raspberries had not long lost their older leaves and are already growing some lush green ones. The back bed where I've got the metal trellises there, they're just there to keep out the way. I've actually got a fig tree and some herbs to actually go into those beds. Now one of the jobs I've got to get going on is replanting my fig tree. Now I've got an idea for it to be here but this ground is incredibly hard underneath this particular compost and there's so much stuff here as well. I'm just going to throw this into the bin. Now, it's one of the reasons I hate growing in the ground here. But luckily, I don't have to dig too much of a hole. Now, this fig tree was out of my garden. I've decided it will be happier down here. So I'm just going to plant this here. Now, luckily, I don't actually have to dig that deep. But I do need to get it in the right angle. Now I only bought this last year and it was only a cheap fig tree. I think it was a couple of pound, probably from Wilco or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. So it's had a year in the ground, which it's grown a really good root ball. And it isn't ideal to go digging them up because I did break some of the main roots. So if this survives here, fantastic. If it doesn't, well, that's just how it goes sometimes. That's the risk you have moving some of your plants around. Now I'm just gonna make sure that that is healed in somewhat. 
because the last thing I want is it to rock and actually get damaged. It's one of the drier areas of the plot, being at the top of the hill. So a lot of this rainwater drains off. I won't say that it's dry, but it's drier than some of the other areas. So my fig tree would be more than happy there and a lot of the herbs. Now this bed, I'm trying not to step on because it's not long been dug over. Now it is a lovely fine surface, but I certainly don't want to keep digging it year in, year out. But for this year, it's been dug. Now I am going to grow some gigantic Pacific squash, I think it is, and I'm going to put two in this bed to trail down the allotment. I'm going to give them a go. It's not for eating, it's not for anything like that, it's just for that little challenge. And who's to say that you can't have that little bit of fun on your allotment? In the holes I'll heavily compost to give them all the nutrients that they need and then throughout the growing season I will probably feed them with extra comfrey tea to see how much growth I can get out of them. In catching up with some other jobs, like this one. kale and it did do fantastically well and it's a crop that really does just keep giving. I'm going to be sowing more kale here this year. It was relatively pest free, didn't have too much issues and I'm trying not to grow it under any heavy netting. I want to try and just keep certain areas of the allotment under net. Now the white fly was horrendous when we had the netting in but when we took it off it actually started reducing. Having that netting actually stops all the natural predators from getting to all those pests in that kale. So I'm going to give it a go this year and see if I can actually grow the kale without any netting. The biggest issue we've got is pigeons. So I'm going to have to figure out how to stop them. Now polytunnel number one has all been weeded and sorted and the pots are there ready for our tomatoes. Now this polytunnel was our original polytunnel, it's not the one we're in the process of actually making and we grew tomatoes and chilies really successfully in here last year. We've actually fed the ground this year with some chicken manure pellets and some blood fish and bone and the pots are all in ready for when the tomatoes come into the polytunnel. But no, I have not started sowing any tomatoes as of yet. That's probably going to be mid-March. They grow really quick and they don't need as long of a growing season as our chilies. Which, yes, they are doing unbelievably well. And I'm really scared that something's going to go wrong because it's going too well for us this year with our chilies. So this is all sorted and ready to go. Just dumped some wood chip in here at the moment and I need to carry a knot down, but that's another job for another day. The inside of the polytunnel, the second polytunnel is now done. I've managed to get the last of the little bit of wood chip down and the beds are now complete. Now I do need to rake it over, make it a little bit more level and obviously we've still got the plastic to go on, but this will be a great additional growing space and I can't wait to start working in here. Now the rhubarb is coming up beautifully, but I am missing one or two crowns, but I'm sure they'll pop up eventually. Now, I'm a little bit worried in some places because I've already got some diseased leaves. But the ground here has been incredibly wet, so that's been quite stressful for the rhubarb. Now the kalettes, my beautiful kalettes, they're actually doing quite well. Well they were until the local pigeons got at it. Now we did take these nets off so I could come in here and actually give it a really good weed and remove all the leaks that had rotten in the ground. But they are growing really well. Now I should really cover them back up 
that there's a high chance of me losing this crop. It's not just the one they've attacked, they've actually got this one too. Now most of the beds are actually empty and really we should have had a cover crop or something to go into these beds through the winter. But again, like I've said before, we were not that organised late last year. But the beds have all been weeded and with a light rake. And unfortunately, Mr Fox just loves coming into here to dig my beds up. It really is a giant pan in the backside. My Jerusalem artichokes are all in where I'm going to grow them for this year. And then this side is going to be something else, which I haven't quite figured out what it's going to be yet. But the beds are now ready for the great seed sowing. And March is when we really do knuckle down and sow an awful lot of seeds. This year it's got, I've made it a little bit more complicated because the amount of flowers I'm actually sowing this year. Because I want to really brighten up our growing space. But I'm sure I'll manage somewhere and I'll have to create other areas to actually put my seedlings in to help them germinate or to protect them. But it won't be long before the last frost arrives. I think for my area here, I think it is around between mid-April to the end of April. So I'm really hoping by the end of April we will be safe from any of these frosts and I can bring out some more of the tender plants that I've got in the house at the moment. Now this area has been majorly tidied up now, I'm still working on it. The weather's been atrocious. It's either been incredibly windy or incredibly wet or both. So I'm working through it bit by bit, but majority of the rubbish is gone. Majority of the stuff is gone. And what is left is what we're actually going to be using on the couple of projects we've still got on the go. The greenhouse is ready to be planted in. My seed greenhouse is all prepped and ready and already has some seeds growing in module trays in there. Everything from cabbages to spinach to broad beans and peas. In general, the only things I grow at this time of year are things that can actually handle some chill once they've germinated. Obviously, apart from my chilies and certain plants, because they take a lot longer to actually get to a certain size. I'll get there and eventually everything will be out of the house because it is getting incredibly crowded. I've still got a lot of big projects on the go. We've still got to cover the polytunnel. We've still got to finish the chicken coop area. I've still got to build nest boxes and I've still got to cover the chicken run area with a really good strong mesh. Finish off the edges of the run so the foxes can't actually dig in and eventually I'll be able to get some chickens. Now I'm in no rush because of the expense with everything at the moment. I've still got the polytunnel cover to pay for and I think that's going to come at about £180. The mesh, the amount of mesh that I need for the chicken run, that's about £120. These things really do add up, but I'm hoping that the big expenditure for this year is all going to be done and dusted. Apart from a few bags of compost to carry on our seed sowing and some of the flower pots and other pots that we've got, I think that should be it. Now, even though our polytunnel is costing us that much for the cover, it will greatly pay off by the amount of produce that we can actually grow in there each year. The reason I say that it will pay for itself, it's not just because it will pay its way with just a bag of chilies. Those chilies will be made into hot sauces, fermented sauces, chopped chilies, spices, dried powders, all that kind of stuff, which all cost an awful lot of money throughout the year to actually buy. So that's where I've got up to at the moment. I've still got a lot to do. And I'm rapidly running out of time before we start getting really busy with sowings, plantings, weeding, and 101 other jobs that you have to do on the allotment at this time of year. But I'm desperately trying to get this done before mid-March at the latest, because I don't think I'll have the time to carry on doing some of the jobs I want to get out of the way. So what are you guys doing on your allotments or your growing areas at the moment? What's your plans for the growing year? I've still got beds. I don't know what I'm going to be growing in this year. And I've got seeds that I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with. But it's a really nice at this time of year to be able to be in your home with a cup of coffee or a hot cup of tea and a pen and paper trying to work out your plot.